Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the GEM webcast series. I'm Michelle Motley. I'm the Student Affairs Manager for the GEM program. And today's webcast is going to focus on the student experience. What I really want to do during this presentation is help you understand what it's like to be a GEM student. Also on the presentation today with me is my colleague, Nate Holt. He's the Graduate Enrollment Advisor. And so he'll be discussing the admissions and application process. And then we also have a current student, Kevin McKenna, that's with us. And Kevin will discuss what it's like to be, from his experience, a GEM student. So I want to get started for those of you who aren't familiar with the GEM program, just to give you a quick overview. So the GEM program was developed in partnership with the energy industry. It's a graduate business and leadership management program. And all of the curriculum focuses exclusively on energy. Our um, partnership with the industry is still strong to this day through our advisory council. Um, the advisory council is made up of energy professionals across all sectors, and we meet with them biannually bi to discuss uh, if our curriculum is up to date, if it's relevant to what's going on in the industry. They also provide opportunities for our students uh, through projects and their companies that they can utilize in the classroom. And then they also work with us on development and exposure of the GEM program. Um, what's unique about the gym program is our hybrid online delivery, and I'll be going into more detail about this when we discuss the online portion and the in-person sessions, but basically the hybrid online uh, delivery is a format where we run on a quarter system, and our students meet every quarter for the first four days of in-person instruction. So this is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then after that weekend ends, the rest of the quarter is completed online. So with this hybrid online delivery, it really enables us to have students from all over the world in the program, um, and also just energy professionals from different sectors. So you get an opportunity to not only learn from your professors, but also your fellow classmates, because they all bring unique experiences to the program. And lastly, I wanted to touch on our accreditation. So the GEM program is housed in the University of Colorado Denver's Business School, and the Business School does hold AACSB accreditation. And AACSB accreditation is the highest form of accreditation that a business school can have, and only about 5% of business schools worldwide actually hold that accreditation. So I think that really speaks to the GEM program's curriculum um, and how up-to-date and relevant it is. And then some fast facts on the GEM program. Um, our first cohort started in January of 2009, and we're currently accepting applications for our 16th cohort that starts this July. So as you can see, we've gone through a lot of growth over the past years from the very start of the program. Um, we have 300 current students and alumni um, in the program, and they're spread all across the world. And these are just some of the countries um, that our students and alumni represent. And again, that kind of goes back to that hybrid online model, which allows us to have students located all over the world. So now let's move into the actual student experience and what it's like to be a GEM student. I think that this slide is really important and showcases the difference of GEM and how it's different from other educational experiences that you may have had. And that's because we really are a student-centric program. You may have already had the opportunity to work with myself or Nate, and so you see that we really do value that personal communication, and that doesn't stop after the admissions process. Um, once you're accepted into the program as the student affairs manager, I am your main point of contact, and I work with you from the moment you're accepted all the way through enrollment. And I do that in a variety of ways. Um, I know that our students are full-time working professionals, and I really want to streamline the onboarding process for you. Um, so if that's me, you know, assisting with the financial aid process, helping you register for courses. Um, if you're coming from out of state, is it helping you find a hotel that's near, near campus? Um, so again, it really lends to the fact that we want to support our students and make sure that you are successful um, from the start till the very end when you graduate. Now I mentioned the hybrid online delivery and how you meet in person at the beginning of every quarter for four days of in-person instruction. So just to give you 
and understanding of that weekend. Um, most of our students come in on the Thursday night and they'll leave that Monday night after class ends. You do take two courses over that weekend. So you have a course in the morning and a course in the afternoon. We provide breakfast for the students in the morning as well as snacks and beverages to keep you hydrated and caffeinated um, throughout the day. We know it's a long day, but um, we do try to support area to support you in that in that area and make sure that that you're focused um, and can handle that, that four days of instruction. But I think what's really important about those four days is it's an opportunity for you to meet your professors, you get to interact with your fellow classmates. Um, the gym program, what I failed to mention, is the gym program is cohort-based, and that's kind of why we call them cohort weekends. You start with a group of students, and you progress throughout the program with that same group. So when you're coming in for those four days, you'll continually see that same group of people every three months, in addition to working with them through the online portion. And I know Kevin will be able to speak more about that. Being a, a student in the program, he can kind of share his experiences on that. So you really do have a lot of peer interaction. And those first four days, I say, are really a foundation. Um, it gives you the opportunity to have discussions that you can carry on into the online portion. You're interacting again with your, with your professors. Um, and we also create events around those four days so that not only, you know, you're not in class the whole time, we want you to have some development opportunities outside of the classroom. And so those events, um, we do it in, in different ways, um, one of them being our site tours. And so this past April, I had the pleasure of taking our students to the National Renewable Energy Lab here in Golden, Colorado. And so we usually do these site tours the Thursday before cohort weekends um, and give our students from out of town enough notice so they can plan around those. And the main reason why we do these site tours is to really give students exposure to other areas and other sectors within the energy industry. We want our students to really understand the, ener uh, the energy industry as a whole. So for example, we might have someone who's working in oil and gas and they never had an opportunity to visit a wind farm and have no idea what that's like. Or maybe we have someone who's working for a solar company and have never been out on an oil and gas rig. Um, so again, it's kind of extending that learning opportunity outside of the classroom and also giving you an opportunity to make connections with other professionals, too. Um, a lot of the times when we do the site tours, it's a group at the company or the organization that's hosting us, and they'll do a special presentation for us and give us a special tour. So it's not just your general tour that everyone's getting. So it, it makes the experience unique. Um, in addition to our site tours, we also know that students are coming back to graduate school because they really want to build and expand their network. And so how we do that is with social events. Obviously, you're in class and you're with your individual cohort, but we have two other cohorts that are in town as well. And so we want to give you exposure to all of the current GEM students as well as alumni, professors, and advisory council members. So we do these social events. Um, in different ways, we have happy hours after class, um, we'll go to sporting events like the Rockies game or Nuggets and Avalanche game, um, we've gone bowling, we'll do lunches, and so this is a way for you to relax outside of class and get to know people. Um, we know that the curriculum and the courses are important to completing the degree, but we also really care about the professional development of our students. And that lends into um, our GEM Executive in Residence program. So this is a new initiative that we just launched in April. And with the Executive in Residence program, what we're trying to do is give our students access to executives from across the energy industry and really give you the opportunity to meet with you know, C-level members of a company that you normally wouldn't have access to. And it all goes into you developing your own executive presence, honing your communication and networking skills. And we um, have different access for students with the executive and residence. So they will lecture in the courses. And I think what's really neat about when they lecture in the courses is they relate it to their experience. Um, so we had them lecture in our accounting course, and they were able to go into the accounting course and actually talk about their experience in accounting with their company and how it was done in the real world. And so, again, they're kind of lending that expertise to the classroom. 
We also have um, opportunities for students to meet with them individually, uh, and that gives you an opportunity to get in front of an executive. They have your resume. They're really interested in learning about you, your career motivations, um, giving you advice, really seek their expertise. And we encourage our students, even if our executive for that quarter is in a different sector, so let's say they're in utilities and you work in oil and gas, and you might think, well, why would I want to meet with this person? Again, it's exposing yourself to different areas, um, helping you develop, understanding the energy mix as a whole. And also, a lot of these different sectors, as you all know, I'm sure, play a part with each other. So utilities use natural gas, they use solar, they use wind. So this is a way to learn about it in, in a different aspect. Um, then we also have small group lunches for students, and so this is more of a relaxed environment for you to interact with the executive. It's usually about 10 people at the lunch. Um, again, just in a relaxed environment to get to know them and for you to understand what it's like to interact with someone at this level um, and help prepare you for maybe one day reaching that level as well. And then lastly, our executive also helps with um, projects and they'll consult during the online portion you'll be working on projects and papers and they'll lend their expertise and give you advice or suggestions on whatever assignment that you're working on. So now that we've touched base on the student experience side, and again, if you have any questions about that, we will have a live Q&A session at the end of this webcast. So I encourage you to send me any questions. Um, you'll see a chat bar at the bottom of your screen, and you can use that to, to send me any questions. I'm more than happy to elaborate on the student experience. Um, but again, we'll have Kevin kind of touch base on that as well. Um, before I go into the online portion, I kind of want to give a background on our curriculum and help you have a better understanding of what our courses focus on. So the gym program, you take 12 courses total, or 36 credit hours. Um, you have your core courses that everyone takes together, and then you have your elective options. I'd like to say that with the electives, that's the way that you can tailor your degree. And so let's say you want to build up your experience in finance, so you might go the advanced finance route and take asset and production management. Um, maybe you're interested in starting your own renewable energy company one day, so you'll take our renewable energy elective. Um, or maybe you're interested more on that policy and law side, and so that's where you would take energy contracts. We also offer uh, two special topic courses, and again, that's another way that we like to get you outside of the classroom. With our special topic courses, uh, one course travels to DC every spring, and that focuses on domestic energy use and policy. Um, we meet with a lot of energy, I would say energy organizations more, being in DC, so you'll meet with the Department of Energy, with World Bank, with the Bureau of Land Management, and again, it's giving access, um, giving our students access to professionals at a high level that they normally wouldn't have access to. And that's the same for the London course. So the London course goes to fall each year, and that focuses more on interna international policy use and, um, and energy use. And so you're meeting with, again, top-level companies, BP, Shell, you meet with their Department of Energy and Climate Change. We go to Oxford and meet with Oxford Analytica and the Nuclear Institute. Um, so it's a really, it's a great way to get outside of the classroom. Um, I have seen students who go on these trips who wish they were mandatory for all students. That's how much they enjoyed them. They've met contacts while they're over there. Um, we had a student in cohort four, actually, who went on the London course, absolutely loved it, and knew that that's he, his career path and his goal was to move overseas and to, and to get a job in London after that course. And through contacts that he met during that travel course, he was able to do that, and he works at a top energy consulting firm there now. So you never know the possibilities, and if you have the opportunity to go on those travel courses, um, I do highly recommend it. And I think, too, um, it's important to to hit on the fact, and I call this one of the most unique pieces of our program, and that has to do with our faculty members. So our faculty are recruited from the energy industry itself, and they are the ones who teach the courses. And that's where that, that's where that real world application comes in. 
not only are they still working full time, they also are very up to date, obviously, on what's going on in the industry, and they're putting that into their courses. They're relaying that in the classes. And so um, I've seen students pick professors' brains on what's going on, or maybe they have something going on in their company, and they, they look to them for their expertise. Um, so they're really used as a piece, not only inside the classroom, but outside as well. And so, for example, um, one of the professors who teaches our accounting course is a CFO at a local energy company here. And um, we also have uh, a lawyer who owns his own energy firm, teaches our environment, uh, law, politics, and regulation course. So again, it's kind of merging that real world experience with the curriculum. We want our students to learn something one day in the classroom and be able to apply it to a work situation the next. And that, that kind of goes into our competency model. And so this model was created by our executive director and it was developed in relationship to what current companies are doing in their organizations. And a lot of them have competency models set up. It's an easy way to kind of show where you need to develop and also like the succession pipeline of once you understand these major buckets. So we've divided it up into three buckets, leading and managing, business acumen, and energy industry expertise. And we have a full document that goes over all of this information, so if you're interested in seeing it, please let Nader, I know we'd be more than happy to send it out to you. Basically, all of our courses fall into the energy industry expertise area. And then after that, they're kind of divided in between leading and then the business acumen. So for instance, under business acumen, that's where your finance and economics courses, um, accounting courses kind of come into play, and then with leading and managing, that's where more of the HR courses or your leadership class um, focuses on. And what we're doing with this is having our students not only know, but their companies or their future companies know what they will be equipped with as far as knowledge once they're a graduate of the GEM program. And so I, I really like this document. Again, I'm happy to send it out because I think it helps a lot of potential students understand, okay, so I'm choosing the GEM program and this is what I'm going to know once I graduate. And then lastly, I want to kind of talk about just the online learning portion. And so you understand the curriculum and kind of what that's about. I speak to a lot of potential students that might be a little hesitant about the online learning piece. And I completely understand that, you know, when online learning was first introduced, um, there wasn't a lot of best practices. And so I think students might still, or potential students might still think of it that way. And the online learning environment has really come a long way, and it's a very big focus for us. Again, we know that you are a full-time working professional, you're going back to school. You want to have you know, the best of both worlds. You get that in-person piece, but you also want the flexibility of a program being online. And that's where the gym program really comes into play. So the program, when you move into the online portion after that weekend, is highly interactive. Um, and we do that through group projects, uh, through discussions, uh, group discussions, and then also your professors record video lectures every week for you to view as well. And the discussions too really lend to the discussions that were started in class and that moves into the online portion. And again, that's why we think that it's important that you have that in-person session to really be that foundation for that quarter. The online portion is asynchronous, so you do not have to log in at a particular time. I know that's um, a reason why a lot of students don't want to go back to school because they have to take night classes. It's really difficult, not only with working full time, but having family obligations to have to go to a campus, you know, two nights a week. And so that's where the asynchronous portion comes in. You'll have deadlines throughout the quarter that you have to adhere to, but when you actually do the work is up to you. So you can carve out time in your schedule that makes sense for you as an individual on when you can complete your assignments. Uh, the program is also very collaborative. Um, again, very different from when online learning was first introduced. This is not text under glass and here's a bunch of reading and good luck. Um, again, we have a, a lot of group projects that so you're interacting with your fellow classmates throughout the quarter and we um, provide the Zoom platform which we're currently using uh, so that you can have video chats with each other, conference calls, you can chat each other during the day if you want to. Um, so again, constantly having those touch bases. And I do see too, um, with the group projects and, and group learning in the online portion, 
is some students do like to pick a certain time each week um, where they all meet together on video, they chat about any assignments they have due, uh, any homework that's coming up, and so again, Yes, you have support through the GEM program, but your support system, a lot of it comes through your fellow classmates too. They're, they're really there for you. They're going through the same experiences as you. And so we try to utilize um, technology in different ways so that you can collaborate with them and have that constant communication. And then lastly, uh, the when you move into the online portion, it is instructor-led. Um, so our professors, again, they record video lectures every week for you to view, and a lot of them are, are working professionals as well. Uh, they've been with the program for a very long time. They understand our students. They understand that you're working, and so they really do keep that in mind when teaching the courses. Um, they are happy to be available for you if you have any questions about homework assignments or an exam coming up or again if something's going on at work and you know this professor is an expert in it I've seen many students reach out to them and be like hey I need your advice um, they have office hours just like they would on campus but again they are pretty much like you can reach me at any time anything that you need and when it's in the online portion too I'm constantly seeing professors post throughout the week like hey I read your discussions this is really great these next assignments are due, and um, so again, a lot of a lot of access. Um, you're not alone, and it, that kind of comes back to is online learning for me. And I like to say that yes, I think online learning can be for pretty much anyone because we have that support system there for you to be successful and to make you feel where you're not out by yourself trying to teach yourself the courses. And of course, I feel like I can't have a webinar without discussing the career aspect of the GEM program. So now that you know about it, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm enrolled in the GEM program. What am I going to get out of this? What are other students doing with this degree once they graduate? I mean, that's a big question when deciding, you know, I'm going back to school and I'm trying to choose the right program. So this slide really highlights um, some areas where our students are and what they've done with the degree and where they've kind of progressed. With our students, um, I typically say that, you know, about 50% of them are using this as a way to move up within their companies, move into more leadership and management roles. But we also have students who might own their own companies. Um, we have students who are consultants who just want a better understanding of the industry. Um, that rings true too. We've had lawyers who have come through for the program. They work for um, energy law firms and they want to have a better understanding of the industry for their clients. Um, and then we have students who want to utilize this because they love the energy industry. They know this is where they want to stay, but maybe they don't necessarily want to stay in their particular sector. And so um, I use an example of a student from cohort seven, and he had a background in solar and energy efficiency um, and more of that renewable side. And he, he loved energy, but he, he was currently in an energy efficiency position and was like, oh, you know, I don't know if I want to stay in this field for that long, but I want to stay in energy. And so he utilized the degree to actually move into a utility company, and he works on product development for their natural gas vehicles. So you really can utilize this degree in a lot of ways. Um, I also say that we get a lot of engineers or those who have more of a technical background, and they didn't really take any business courses in their undergrad, and so they want to have a better understanding of the industry as a whole, and also understand the business side, because they're... They know their area, they know that technical side, but they have no idea like what's going on in the finance department or what's going on in accounting or business development. And so this program helps provide them with that knowledge and that understanding. And then I think um, it's important too to point out, you'll see our exit, exit survey results. And so we survey our students when they first start the program and then up to six months after they graduate. And with this survey data, um, basically 60% of our students from the time they started the program have been promoted, and then 60% have received a salary increase. Um, out of that 60%, 34% have received a 10% salary increase or more. So 
there is a return on your investment. I know that's very important for people because you are investing in yourself and in this program. And we do want to demonstrate and show that um, our students are successful after they graduate. And I, I've kind of said in the beginning, oh, we're here from you, you know, from the time you request information about the program from the time you graduate. But I don't want you to think it ends there either. Um, we are developing an alumni association. We stay in touch with our alumni. I think that's one of the really the great benefit of the program is we know every single one of our students. We know who you are, your career motivations, what you're currently doing. We know a lot of our students' families. Um, and so that doesn't end when you graduate. We call it a gem family. We're always here for you. Um, we have alumni who have come back from cohort two who are like, hey, you know, I just kind of want to explore some new career opportunities. Uh, do you have any connections for me? And so that goes into my next slide, showing you kind of the gym network and the reach. Um, now this, we kind of divided up into the different, different areas that our students are in. This list, though, is not an exhaustive list of, of the student, of, our, of the companies that our students work for, um, but this kind of gives you a snapshot of, of some of the, the major um, energy companies. And so that lends into that piece of you are going to be in class with fellow students who are working in the industry the GEM program has an extensive network of alumni, so we always encourage you, if there's a certain company you're looking at, um, we will check if we have alumni or advisory council there. We're happy to put you in touch instead of copies, and so that goes into that networking piece of really providing you with everything we can uh, for you to be successful. And so again, that's kind of the snapshot of the program. I talked about the in-person session, the online, some of the career opportunities. And I would now like to take the time uh, to pass the presentation over to Kevin. So Kevin is a current student in cohort 15, and he's out of Texas. And he will share more about his experiences thus far. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks, Michelle. I uh, hope everyone can hear me just fine. Um, yeah, my name's uh, Kevin McKenna. As Michelle said, uh, I guess about six months ago, I was watching a similar presentation and uh, considering whether or not uh, GEM was going to be a, a good decision for me. And I have to say that so far, it really has been. Um, so yeah, Stigma Cubed is probably a company some of you have maybe heard of, but it, we're pretty small. We got about 100 people, but uh, we're, we're really an uh, upstream e and uh, company uh, services and consulting company uh, that focuses on petroleum engineering and geophysics, especially related to unconventional development around uh, hydraulic fracking, kind of m mapping what, what happens in the, the subsurface. Um, so I've been now in, in this industry since my undergraduate degree in geology back in 1997. So I've, I've been around for a while. And um, I started off as a, a reservoir modeler, um, you know, working on actual technical project work in uh, uh, the G and G space. And I did that for about five years. And then I must not have been too good at it because I ended up going into sales and uh, business development. And and ultimately, that's led me into various different managerial roles, um, mainly for small companies. Uh, you know, I think uh, I've, I've worked for. Uh, Paradigm was one you may have heard of. I briefly worked for Halliburton for a little while. That was probably the, the biggest stint I ever had. Um, but I didn't get a lot of on-the-job training. So most of what I know about business has been learned um, just through hard knocks, you know, kind of uh, as you go. And when you learn by trial and error, sometimes the errors can actually be fairly expensive. Uh, and, and really, so I, I decided that it might be a good time to, you know, maybe go to version 2.0 of my career and get some of the uh, background on, in business that I don't have. Um, however, you know, just a generic uh, MBA really didn't sound all that great to me because, you know, the, the value of that in, in my industry is pretty questionable unless you're going to somewhere like Wharton or, you know, one of the top five in, in the country. Um, so I, I guess I met, um, maybe Michelle was there at, at the URTEC, which is an unconventional reservoir technology conference in San Antonio last July. And I thought, and this is the first program I've really come across that leverages what I've already done and what I hope to do in the future. 
and also sounds manageable uh, given the constraints of my life, you know, because um, so I'm, I'm very busy at work, uh, as, as I'm sure most of you are. Uh, but I also have a family, so I've got three kids um, and, a, and a wife, um, age seven, nine, and 11 uh, at home. And, you know, we do things like baseball and scouts uh, and things like that. So it, it was already kind of a busy life uh, before this, uh, and now I just have no free time. Uh, but, but that's okay, because it, what I'm learning is already uh, very applicable to what I'm doing currently. So it's not like you... Uh, in this program, at least what I've experienced so far, it's not like you're waiting until you get your degree and it's like, oh, okay, now I can start using this degree I have. Um, you know, for example, so what in my current role, I spend a lot of time talking to our CFO about uh, the numbers. And, you know, I'm taking a uh, managerial accounting class right now. And so all of a sudden, I understand what all those spreadsheets really mean and what they are. And it's been quite helpful in understanding what I'm doing. So I, it's a very practical course. Um, you know, I was kind of joking about the zero free time. That, that's not exactly true. But I don't want you to think that this is an easy program. So, you know, there, there might be some MBA programs out there that are really just to get the letters, you know, at, at the end of the course, it's fairly manageable and easy work. But the workload for this is challenging. Uh, however, I think that it's also manageable for a full-time uh, student with a family and or full-time worker with a family who also wants to do it. Um, and I, I think the team-based approach is uh, one thing that I really like. And, and the cohort weekends are, are key uh, to making it work, I think. So those are pretty intense. I mean, you're, you're basically in lectures, I think, 10 hours a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then, you know, you want to go out to dinner with the, the people in your cohort you really get to know these people during the cohort um, weekend. And, you know, then you also have smaller teams within your group. So your, your cohort might have, I don't know, 30, 40 people in it. And then you'll have a smaller group each, uh, two, uh, you know, each 10 week uh, class period that will have maybe four or five people. And so over the course of that little sprint, well, two classes at a time, you really get to know these people because you're working on group projects that uh, require a lot of collaboration. And, um, you know, being out of state uh, without the cohort weekend, I don't think it would be, you know, I, I couldn't put face with names and things like that. But because of the cohort weekend, it, it actually works really well because I already know these people. And I see it, uh, you know, the older cohorts, the cohort 14 and 13, I think the further you get into this, the better friends you become. Uh, with everybody in the group and the, the network, I, I imagine, is going to be quite strong um, once you're done. And the online learning environment, I mean, we're, we're using it right now, essentially. So Zoom is the same thing we use to uh, talk to each other at night and uh, weekends. Uh, currently, I mean, you talk about out of state. I actually have somebody in my small team right now who is uh, based in Ghana. So he's got about, I think, an eight-hour time difference from us. So we, we've scheduled time on Sundays to just have a weekly update and make sure he can participate. We also have uh, another person in our group who's a full-time nurse. She got, uh, I think she got a laid off from Schlumberger, so she's also a nurse. And uh, her schedule, you know, she works nights sometimes. So it, it, everybody just figures out a way to make it work. And uh, all the people I've worked with so far are, are very good. We have different skills, so it's not like... Uh, you know, somebody might be a very good writer, another person might be very strong technically, another person might really love to do research, and you all kind of figure out how, how to work as a team, and, and I think that's part of the point, is, is understand better how to build a team, how to work with teams, and, and things like that. So, um, it's been very good. Um, I, you know, you, you end up um, making some pretty good friends, because you're all in this together. There are certain times at, at, during the course of these you know, so just to be clear, every every quarter you have a 10-week class session where you do two classes at a time. I think Michelle already mentioned that. 10 weeks goes by pretty quick, and there's certain times when you feel very, very busy, but you're kind of all in it together with your cohort, and you guys, you know, commiserate and help each other out, and um, it, it's just been a good experience. And, and I, you know, we have a very diverse cohort, so there's a few oil and gas people like me. There's several power gen people. There's a there's a guy who's in a nuclear job right now, and uh, 
you know, it's been very, very good to expand my um, understanding of the entire industry. I feel like this program down the road should enable me to, um, you know, if I wanted to move into another aspect of oil and gas or even power generation or even renewables, if we wanted to do something entrepreneurial along those lines, I think what I'm getting right now is really going to help. So, you know, um, it's just if you're if you're on the fence, um, I would recommend giving it a try. I, I think it's a really good program. Um, the other thing I should say is that in ter one, one concern I had, it wasn't a big concern, but I thought I might be the oldest person in the program. And um, I'm not. We, I think we have a, a range of people that, you know, it's probably anywhere from 22 or 24 years old. And we got several 30 something ish people. And then we have a few people that are, you know, mid, I think mid to late forties. So, uh, it, you know, people are working longer and longer and, uh, I, I wouldn't count yourself out and say, you know what, it's too late for me to do this. Uh, you, you know, I, I think you'll get out a lot out of it. So that's pretty much all I had. That's great. Thank you so much, Kevin. And, um, like I mentioned, we're, we have a Q and a session at the end of the presentation. Please, if you have any questions for Kevin, send them to me. Um, I will make sure that, that he gets them answered, um, at the end. And I think he hit on a lot of great points, um, stuff that I failed to mention, such as, uh, the curriculum and how it's relatable to what you do. And I, I think a big part of going back to school and choosing a program is what are you going to be excited about? Um, you're already juggling a lot of responsibilities and then you're adding school on top of it. And so you want to pick something that you can actually get behind that you care about and it's relevant to what you're doing in the workplace. And we see a lot of students on some of the projects in their classes utilize the school environment to work on things from from work. So if there's a certain project or something that their company is working on or they're tasked to do within their individual department, they will work on that project in school and not only get credit for it in their class, but obviously accomplish something in, in the workspace. And so um, I thought, Kevin, that that was a great point to really add that, that you can you know get excited about the curriculum. It's stuff that you're doing every day. Um, and then also kind of giving you the knowledge outside of your current area of expertise um, and understanding a different aspect of the energy industry. So uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send them to me. I've, we've seen a few come in already, and we, I will make sure to get to those in the Q&A. Uh, so at this point in time, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Nate Holt. Um, as I mentioned, he's a graduate enrollment advisor, and he will discuss the application and admissions process. Well, thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Kevin. You can see the support that you received through the GEM program. And I, I truly believe that's something that makes the program really unique is that our goals as a program truly is to do everything we possibly can to help you accomplish your professional goals. And not only from the staff side, but from the collaboration on the student side as well. And as Michelle said, I'm Nate Holt. I'm the graduate enrollment advisor. So I'll work with you. And I have saw a number of your names. I've already worked with you quite a bit. And uh, just helping you with uh, deciding whether this is the program for you and how it aligns with your goals, uh, just from anything from financial aid to uh, curriculum questions to the application process as well. So uh, I will go through uh, step by step the application requirements uh, and kind of the next steps of, of what we'll look for. So as you see listed, uh, with the application requirements. The first step we're going to look for uh, is this online application. And one thing to keep in mind is that this process doesn't have to be all completed at one time. We understand that you want to focus uh, on your essays, on your resume to make sure you're submitting the best quality that you can. Uh, so you can go in and exit and save and come back in at any point. Uh, so this first step is the online application. And uh, we are waiving the application fee until Friday, May 20th. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time if you have questions about this, and I can walk you through how to have this fee waived. Uh, the other documents that we're going to require are the four essay questions, uh, which are really just a chance for us to get to know you better, get to know why you're interested in the GEM program, uh, and what you believe it'll do for you 
in your career. A resume just that really overviews your professional experience, your educational background, uh, and another aspect to let us get to know you. Uh, another requirement is going to be the official GMAT scores. This requirement can be waived with five plus years of professional experience. Uh, the program really emphasizes and really values energy experience. Uh, well, that can be waived and with three to five years experience there is an application uh, for the GMAT waiver and again feel free to reach out to me and I'll walk you through in detail how to go through this process. Uh, there is still is time to do this, so after this, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, the next step is the two letters of recommendation. So uh, these are professional references that can attest to your work experience and attest to who you are as a professional and uh, what it's like to work with you in a group. For our international candidates, we will need official TOEFL scores and reach out to me and I can walk you through that process of, of how to go through this. So once we receive all of these documents and the completed online application, I'll reach out to you to schedule an admissions interview with our admissions committee. And the purpose of this is for our committee to get to know you better and get to know why you wanna do the GEM program and, and what you believe you'll receive out of it. And the other part of it is to give you an opportunity to ask us questions and to see, uh, is this the right program for me? And, uh, and how is it going to help me? And it's, it's an opportunity for a two-way conversation to make sure that this is the right decision for you. So next I'm going to go, we kind of got through the admissions requirements. Now I'm going to go through some insider tips for you of uh, how to focus some of these documents, how to focus them to what our admissions committee is going to look for. Uh, the first one with the resume is like I said, we really value that professional experience. It adds to the overall quality of the program. So focus your resume on your energy experience. Be detailed uh, in your experience, what you've accomplished throughout your career, uh, and really focus it on that. With the essay questions, this is really, like I said, an opportunity for our admissions committee to see what your goals are, what your purpose is, and what your mission through the GEM program is. Uh, so my suggestion is to be very clear and concise in these answers. There's four essay questions. Uh, they're 200 words each, so be very straightforward. And define to us why you're applying to the program. Why are you interested in the program? Uh, and let us know what your goals are and who you are as a professional and where you see this program helping you go. Lastly, with the letters of recommendation, it, choose professional coworkers, supervisors that can attest to your work experience, that have worked on projects with you, uh, that have supervised you, and really can truly speak to what it's like to work with you in a group. And uh, those are going to be the most valuable references uh, that you can you can provide us. So something. Um, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. I'm passionate about working with prospective students. I'm passionate about trying to help you accomplish your goals. I love doing this. So feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll do everything I can to possibly help you. Um, and lastly, you'll see this, uh, this slide is just to make this process as easy for you and as quick for you as we possibly can. Uh, this first step is start that online application, get that process rolling. Uh, like I said, all we need to waive that application fee by Friday is the submitted online application. Uh, second, reach out to your references. Let them know that this is coming. And once you submit that online application, they'll receive an email uh, describing of their next steps to do to submit those letters of recommendations for you. And then lastly, uh, reach out to all colleges and universities that you've attended for the official transcripts. We will need hard copies. Uh, from every university and college that you've attended for the admissions process. So again, thank you for uh, thank you for your interest in the program. We're really passionate about GEM and really passionate about what we do here. So feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, I can provide you information about the GMAT waiver process. 
the essay questions I can provide you. And even if you just want to talk about the program in more detail with me, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you. Thanks. Thank you, Nate. Um, as you mentioned, the, the application process is pretty straightforward. We are more than happy to help you with any piece of it or, again, just uh, speaking with you further about your background. If you have questions of whether or not this would be a good fit, we're, we're always more than happy to, to help in that regard and also putting you in touch with current students and alumni um, like Kevin to kind of talk about their experiences um, with being a student. It, that always helps in the process, too. So um, we have uh, some important dates up here. Uh, again, the application fee is being waived until May 20th. Uh, the application deadline is not until June 15th, so there is still plenty of time to apply and get started in July. Um, for those of you who aren't from Colorado, July is a fantastic time to visit Colorado. It's, it's beautiful, so it's a good time to start a program. Um, and classes officially start on July 15th. Now, we did receive um, some questions coming in, and so I want to make sure I get to those. Um, the first question, Kevin, this one uh, will be for you. Um, would you mind sharing uh, some more examples of how you've maybe used the curriculum thus far in your current position? Yeah, um, so sure, a couple of different ways. You know, I, I mentioned that the um, accounting stuff so you learn how to uh, understand and read a balance sheet income statement and cash flow which are kind of the three main things that um, one would use to describe the financial situation of a company my CFO is always in my my role is to bring revenue into the company right with with my team and uh, so I'm contributing the income but I need to see how that fits into the total cost structure. And I just have an easier time uh, having those discussions now because I understand where it fits in and why it's important. Um, other, other ways of doing it that, that I've done um, almost selfishly in the past. So, you know, we had to compare the financial um, results of three different companies in the cohort weekend, I think it was three. And so I chose three of my competitors and just looked at their financials so I could understand what they're doing and how they're doing well, uh, things like that. Um, I think last semester uh, we did a project that was pretty interesting um, where we, it, was, it, was, it was sort of a energy issues and realities was the name of the course. It was a very broad overview of the whole energy industry and you could do a project on almost anything and what we chose to do was understand how the crew shift uh, is, is affecting um, the oil and gas and power industries by uh, creating a survey and survey monkey and putting it out. And we got about 300 and something responses, but uh, what we really did found out is that there's uh, some big generational differences that affect your business. And I see those same things happening in my business. So we have some guys that are nearing retirement age and we have 20 something year old engineers and I'm kind of in the middle and understanding how those different groups think and act um, has been very useful. So, uh, you know, you actually have some freedom when you're choosing your project topics to uh, pick a topic that might really be useful for you um, in, in your current work. So that's some examples. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I received another question. I thought this was a really good one. It, it asked, um, how, do, how does GEM bridge the technical and management part of, of energy and its curriculum? And, and I'll kind of answer that. And Kevin, if you have any experience or any thought that you want to throw into that, please, please do. Um, what GEM is trying to do is get you to think like a company decision maker. We want you to be able to not only understand your current area, your expertise, if you are working on the technical side, but also understanding the larger picture of the company and how all departments work together. Kevin kind of mentioned, you know, about like spreadsheets and financials. Um, our, our accounting professor always jokes around, you know, I'm not going to turn you into an accountant in 10, in 10 weeks. However, I do want you as a manager, as a leader in your company, you're going to have to make th these big decisions. You're going to have to understand what's going on in the accounting department. You're going to have to understand how to read these spreadsheets and make decisions based off of them. And so in every course, you know, the professors are challenging you with projects like these to really push you outside again of your individual expertise and seeing that greater picture and how it all works together. And I don't know, Kevin, if you have any thought 
anything you wanted to add to that? Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think also uh, it does seem like uh, many of the people are are coming from a technical background, trying to understand how business works. Uh, but the the curriculum also is designed for somebody like a lawyer or um, a landman. So a landman is not doesn't have to be a geologist or anything like that. He could just be a business person or a lawyer for that matter. Uh, to get a good overview of the oil and gas industry, for example, or the coal industry, like you're, it, it works both ways. So it's supposed to be, you know, for for me, the technical aspects of the oil and gas business are, are very straightforward. I've been dealing with those my whole life, but you know, it, the, the business part and how it relates to the oil and gas business is, is all new. Um, it, it could work the other way around. So I, I we had a, a landman, we have a landman in our cohort who. Um, you know, it's, it's just learning some of the technical aspects at a very high level. So he, he can have better conversations when he's out talking to an engineer in the field um, about the work they're doing and have a better understanding of, of why uh, it, it matters. So uh, I, I think the curriculum works both ways in a way. It, it's we, There may be more technical people trying to learn business, but it, it can work the other way around too. <laughs> No, and Kevin, that's a great point. Um, I, I say that usually like when our students come into the program, half of them have that technical background, half of them don't. They're already working in the business side. Um, and so it does work both ways. And it's important too to note that you will have um, a technical course that, that you do take in the program. And Kevin's not quite there. That will be in the next quarter for him. But it's technical aspects of energy science. And so it is, again, that other side of things. For those who have more of that business background and understanding, we want them to know how these – how the energy technology actually works. I mean, that's an important piece of it as well. They can't just understand the business side. They need to have an understanding of the technical side too. And so um, that, that was an excellent point, Kevin, to, to bring up there. Um, now this next question, Nate, this will be for you. It has to do with the application and admissions process. Um, so this potential student wants to know, do I need to submit um, each and every required document during the time of the online application? Um, or is it you know, is it a process? Can I submit things as I go? That's a great question. So you can submit it in different pieces. So you can go in and save, leave the application, the online application, uh, and save, and then come back. Another option that you have is you can send these documents directly to me if you'd like, if that's easier for you. Uh, email them directly to me, and I'll have them submitted for you. Um, but yes, you you can go in and out and submit that application. Uh, all we'll need by Friday for that application fee, like I said, uh, is the online application portion. Uh, the other documents can come in at a later point and you can send those directly to me or you can submit those with the online portion. Great, thank you, Nate. Um, and then another question we, we received is, um, Kevin had mentioned that you work in a group of students and with a group of students in, in that particular corridor. And so they wanted to know, do you stay with this smaller group of students within your cohort the entire time? Um, and the answer to that is no. Uh, so what we do is, yes, you have your greater overall cohort group that you, you take classes with each quarter. Then like Kevin said, we, we um, divide you up into smaller groups that you work closely with in that quarter. And so once that quarter ends and a new quarter starts, we rotate that group. And so you get to work with other individuals in your cohort. And we do that um, on purpose so that you have a chance to work individually with everyone in your group. And again, like Kevin said, it's kind of we're playing off of people's strengths and weaknesses when we set up these groups. And so that way you really get to know get to know everyone. Um, and, and Kevin's right, like he said, he's seen cohort 14 and 13 and kind of how their relationships have developed through the program. And you do become very close uh, with your cohort group. And I think a lot of it is due to the group work and, and constantly being in touch with these people and, and they're kind of your support, support base. Um, one of the things that I love to see is when graduation comes around and I swear there's, there's, always students that say this. When I first started this program, it was just, you know, I wanted to get into the program. I, I needed this degree and I, yeah, I wanted the information and stuff like that. I didn't really think about the social piece of it. Um, I didn't think about my other classmates or the relationships that I would build with these people. And they're like, now that I'm at graduation and it's over, I can't believe um, the type of friendships that I've really developed and how I'm going to be in touch with these people, I feel like for the rest of my life. And now I have this network that 
you know, once I'm out there, I'm out of school, and I might have questions about a certain area, and I can be like, hey, yeah, I had a landman, or I had an engineer in my program. I'm going to reach out to him because I have this question about work. So they're always like, I was really surprised about that piece of, um, of, of the program is really getting to know, getting to know the fellow classmates. Um, so that's actually all the questions we have at this time, and I, I kind of want to be sensitive to everyone's time here. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about the GEM program. I know we said it a lot. We are here to answer any questions, provide more information, anything you need. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Nate or I, um, or if you have additional questions for Kevin, I'm sure he'd be happy for me to put you in touch with him. Uh, so thank you again, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day.